Diamondbacks front office focus with Wolf and Luke. Yeah, it doesn't get any bigger than the game tonight at Chase Field, Game 5 of the World Series, which is still fun to say. Uh, we're joined right now on the Arizona Sports Line by D-backs General Manager Mike Hayes. And Mike, thank you for the time. How's it going? Hi, guys. How are you? It's going about how you would expect it to be going. Yeah, well, Mike. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Really appreciate it. Sure. Uh, I guess let's uh, let's start there. We were talking earlier. I mean, it's it's an uphill battle now, but at the same time, you guys have had plenty of three-game winning streaks this season. We were talking how it would almost be fitting for this team if you were going to win it all. This is kind of how you would do it. What's uh, what's the mindset going into at least the last home game of the season? Yeah. Um, first off, like, it, you know, last night's game stunk, uh, and that's on me. You know, I left them without a fourth starter going into the playoffs, and you know, you, you hope you can kind of cobble things together and piece it together. And, and that's what, you know, that's the disappointing part about last night, but this thing's far from over. Like I've, <laughs> I've been a part of seven game series. We were down three to one, came back and won. Um, I know others that I'm around have as well. Um, we have Zach Gallen going tonight. Uh, we have it lined up <clears throat> the way you would want it lined up to be able to pull off something like that. Having said that we are facing a very good baseball team with, the two hole hitter who looks like Babe Ruth right now. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and we got our work cut out for us, but you know, I look, I don't know that we've played our best baseball. We play our best baseball. I think we're going to give them a run for their money, but we'll see. It has to start tonight. Nothing else matters. Six doesn't matter. Seven doesn't matter. We have to win game five. I'm glad we're going to be still here doing that. The crowds have been incredible. I mean, uh, Mike Fitz, Gerald and I were talking about it last night, ninth inning, getting pinned to the mat, down 11 to 5, and everyone was still here on their feet. And we, we, you know, I know the players recognize that. I know they do. And it was an awesome thing to at least witness on the back end of that game. Mike, it's amazing to me because you continue to talk about not having a fourth starter and being so accountable with holding yourself accountable and saying, you know what, uh, I should have had a four starter on. But you got to hear, Mike, without having a four starter. Why do you yeah, continue look, to the blame yourself there for that? Is, the mentality there is like you're happy to be there. That's what that's what kind of that speaks to me a little bit. And I, no way. Like, I, I, I look, you, my job is to prepare us for every scenario. That scenario includes playing 35 extra days during the season, which – is incredible for this organization, for our players, all the things that they've done. Uh, you just you don't want that to be, you know, part of what what has gone. And yeah, the players have to step up and perform. Yes, we all know that. Like in the end of the day, we're not the ones out there performing. They have to go out and perform. They have every ability to go out and do that. But you want to feel like you are being a, a contributing part of what is moving forward. And and for that one piece to it. Like you still, you know, you, look, you file that away and you make those adjustments. We all have failures in this game, but yeah, the players have played their butts off to get us to this point. We, we are very capable of playing exciting baseball. We're going to continue to play more. Yeah. One way or another, this is the last home game of the season. That's a weird thing to say, mm -hmm. but it's also crazy to say you're doing that on November 1st. And if you rewinded the clock 365 days ago on November 1st, Right, we were we were we were four and a half weeks into our football season at that point. <laughs> uh, we're talking to Mike Hayes and Mike. You mentioned uh, you know being around seven game series that have had twists and turns in the past. In your experience, what is what is a big key to coming back from down three one? You got to hit. You got to hit. I think you know. I, look, I, it's hard for me to say that coming off giving up eleven runs, right? And I, and I feel like I feel like a dummy sometimes when I want to talk about the offense in those moments. I think given the pitchers we're going to roll out there for the next three days, we have to hit. Those guys are going to keep these games where they need to be. I'm very confident of that. Mm. With three really good starting pitchers, the best part of our bullpen in the very back end has not pitched, so they're going to run. Yeah, they're going to go on. We're going to red line here to a degree. We're safe. Um, so I would imagine you're going to get a heavy dose of, of Thompson, Ginkle, and, and Seawald in the next couple of days along with those guys. But we have to be able to create some separation offensively. If we do that, I feel good about it. I think that's what pops the balloon for the team, puts the other team back on their heels. They put us on our heels last night. You can see it, you mm -hmm. watch it, and the guys did a great job of clawing back up seven runs, even though they were down considerably. But you're, you have to put the other team back on their heels. And I think we do that 
by going out there and having a consistent offensive game where we're running like we did in the first two games. Um, I think that that is, but we all know the precursor to that is getting on base. Yeah, Mike, um, Zach Gallen hasn't been bad, but he hasn't been Zach Gallen either, I would say. I think that's a legitimate comment to make. What kind of outing do you expect from Zach Gallen tonight? I think we're going to get one of his best outings. This, he's so well prepared. And yeah, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head, right? Like yeah. the expectations for his performances are a little out of whack. Uh, and I get it. Look, everybody wants to, you know, talk about, uh, um, you know, the playoff performances where the starting pitcher literally just eviscerates the other team <laughs> and gives them no chance. That's, that's not usually how baseball goes in a lot of cases, but we, we, we have our best pitcher going tonight. We have our co-best pitcher if we get there in game six, and it lines up. But I, I know, like I said, I, the game is going to be where it needs to be if we can go out there and dictate the pace a little bit on offense. We're talking to Mike Hayes and Mike, you mentioned the crowd last night, and it was funny we were talking about that too. Even when it was 11-1 to in the eighth, the crowd was into it and ready to go. And, and you guys did get seven runs late, which I know you can't carry over. But does that do anything that you had to – that Texas had to throw some of their relievers out there they probably didn't want to throw? Oh, for sure. I mean, when LeClerc was warming up, the one goal you have when you're down six runs is let's just get LeClerc into the game. Yes. Like, and, and it would be the flip for us, right? If, if we were throwing in that situation, we had to bring Seawald into the game. Throwing relievers most of the time, if he has to pitch again tonight on three days, three days in a row, you know, you start to, you start to see some things. Now, maybe not. Maybe, maybe he's superhuman and it won't matter. Um, but, yeah, anytime you can make them use their bullpen, that becomes sort of the, the, the little victory even though you lose the game. And it's not anything that anybody's celebrating or slapping five over afterwards. It's just those are the little nuances that get lost when if you can go and capture a game off of their bullpen, you may look back and say, hey, that night we made them work and push – um, him into the game so it, it mattered um, but again I, I thought I thought the and, and it is you know we haven't been to the World Series in a long time so I appreciate the fans being there but them being into the game like that and I know how it's going to be tonight we haven't given them enough reasons to to make it so loud that it becomes um, you know what it will for the other team I, I, I know we need to give them those reasons tonight to, to make this atmosphere what I have a feeling it's going to be. Mike, it's a very difficult situation, of course, obviously, and I know you're never going to say, well, they, they, their confidence is absolutely blown. Of course not. But this team strikes me as a super confident team. Coming back down 3-1 in a series, in a World Series, for this team, Seems like it's a likely thing to do. I mean, <laughs> is it ridiculous to say that to you because they have overcome so much already? Yeah, likely is probably a, 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 a little bit of an aggressive position to take. But look, if you're in the batter's box, for sure likely. But without you in the batter's box, uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I think – this team is confident. I we have been through the ringer this year in terms of games we've lost. We lost ten to nothing in Philadelphia. Um, not proud of that, but it has happened. And this team has recovered. Uh, in 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 I think walk what we did in Philadelphia is a good sign. I think showing that you know we we were we had our backs against the wall there too, yeah. and we played two really good baseball games. Now we have to play three really good baseball games, and I'm confident that this team is going to be ready to do that tonight. Mike, you mentioned what Corey Seager's done in this series. Is there, and obviously there's not an easy way to do this because he's a really good player, but is there a way to make sure he doesn't beat you guys? Yeah, look, I, I don't know. You go back and forth. Yes, we could intentionally walk him every time he came up. Um, that's probably not what's going to happen. We, at the end of the day, you know, the guys we have going out there on the mound should are are really good pitchers too, and – should be able to attack him. He has been so good on both sides of the ball. He is, what an incredible player. Um, I take the offense out of it. Look at what he's doing on defense. I mean, that double play he turned on Marte the other night was incredible. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. I mean, we're going to have to be careful. I think we have tried to be careful. I think, look, once you're down the way we were last night, I mean, it's more about challenging hitters and getting out. So, like, walking guys in those situations is 
that's not the plan ever. You know, you're trying to force contact and hope that he's going to make outs with good pitches. Um, you know, but if we get into situations, we'll see what happens. Uh, but he's been he's been so good in this series, and it's a really talented Rangers team. And they've played to this point; they have outplayed us. And to this point, moving forward, we're, we need to outplay them considerably. Well, Mike, we appreciate the time as always. Mike, good luck tonight you, and this weekend. All right. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That's uh, Mike Hazen, D-backs general manager, joining us right there. What five hours ahead of Game Five of the World Series?